Hey guys, this is Andy from Mobile Must Have. In this video, we're doing an equipment upgrade in a Class A. Now, I'm actually really excited about recording this video as it's a new one we haven't done before. We've done a lot of installs from scratch going all the way up to our full like bundle installs where you've seen us do roof antennas, Starlink, and then the routers inside. Um, and I'll link a couple of those if, if that's really what you're looking for. This video is more focused on how to upgrade your equipment or some ideas to upgrade your equipment if you've started maybe at a baseline level and are then looking to add 5G or add Starlink or you're trying to add and grow your existing connection set, this might give you some ideas. And that's what this video is about today. Now, the rig we're working with today is a 2019 Tiffin Zephyr. Uh, it was a gorgeous rig, and I appreciate John for letting us come in and film as we did this install for him. Um, but what we're what John had before is basically our Essentials Internet Bundle. It is going to consist of a Peplink BR1 Mini. Um, and then he has a five-in-one roof antenna, uh, a pointing roof antenna installed. And then all the power was basically already installed all up front. Uh, now, some of the new changes he's done since going with our internet bundle is he's wanted to add Starlink to his mix-up, so he has Starlink in places where cell might not be reaching, um, and he wanted to better integrate basically his Starlink experience into the Peplink. Um, and it became pretty clear to me that with a brand new device that was out from Peplink, this is a good opportunity to one, not only show you guys this device and how, how it can fit in and how it can be installed, but it was the perfect device for what John was trying to get out and what he was trying to do with his existing kind of setup. John came to me with like two main concerns he was trying to overcome. One was uh, just general Wi-Fi issues. He wasn't having enough Wi-Fi outside of his RV when fully connected, so he was trying to stream with that outside TV and just get better connectivity when working outside. Um, but he also wanted to get a little bit faster speeds as he was doing a lot of work with his photography and just wanted more out of the system. Um, and he was on LTE, he was on a CAT7 uh, router before, so moving to a 5G, you're gonna see a big boost in that. To tackle both of John's kind of challenges here, I broke it into two different kind of sections. So first is we're gonna do the install of the B1 5G. That will help, one, get the Starlink integration, get a much faster speed out of that, and you'll get the full capacity of Starlink. And then two, it will help um, with faster upload speeds when not using Starlink, because you now have a 5G connection. And he's gonna be using our new M-Series data plans, which work on all carriers. So it's one data plan, and you can it, it just works on any network based on what's available in your area. The second is, is we're gonna bring in an access point, move that midway back in his RV so his Wi-Fi just has a better range as it goes through some of the metal structures of the RV. Sometimes Wi-Fi range can be challenging depending on kind of what your RV is made from and how that's all structured. Now, compared to other install videos we have done, this one has to have been the absolute easiest as all the hard work was already done for me. Couldn't ask for more. All the power had already been run, uh, all the entire Antenna cables had already run, the antenna had been installed for goodness sake, and all the ethernet cables that he wanted had already been put in place. So this was really much more of an equipment install swap, um, and then getting that additional access point to work, um, you know, much more than like our physical antenna installs, which again, if you want to know more about that, we've got lots of videos there too. Now in the beginning, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna remove the old equipment that um, we're not gonna need at this point and we're gonna be working on mounting the B1 5G. It fit perfectly in his front cabinet here. It's a very thin kind of low profile router. It's different than the mobile routers in the sense of its kind of body, body design and style, but it's still a very slim and sleek profile router that will work on DC or AC power. The only thing the B1 5G Pro doesn't have that some of the more mobile friendly routers will have is that GPS functionality. So just keep that in mind if that's something that's important to you. Um, for us, we also didn't want to really permanently mount anything by adding new holes into any of his existing kind of cabinets or um, you know, wall space. So we went with uh, kind of a heavy duty Velcro strip that John had on hand already. And this allows him to basically remove the router if he wants to ever actually put a physical SIM card in it, or just put it up and down depending on if he needs to do any work behind the cabinet. It's not permanently installed to where it's causing any damage. It's very easy to take on and off. Since we're not doing any particular antenna install in addition to what's already there, we can just take the existing antenna and plug it directly into the router as well, 
And of course, power is right there, uh, so we're just gonna plug it in. Now, this install is running on AC power. Uh, this is a Tiffin, it's a 2019 Tiffin Zephyr, so it has dual inverters, it's got everything you need. So we don't need to run 12 volt in this particular case, so we just ran it off the inverter. This makes the install of this B1 uh, 5G just look amazingly easy as it was. And just was perfectly placed right in this cabinet. Everything was right there. Now I will take one, one moment to note here about the antenna that we've cho that was already installed and the B1 5G. The antenna isn't necessarily the perfect pair. The antenna that was pre-installed is a pointing five in one uh, antenna. That's gonna have two cell, two Wi-Fi, and a GPS. Our new router, the B1 5G, is going to require four cell, two Wi-Fi, and doesn't have a GPS. But we still want to make sure we can utilize basically that antenna when we need it if we're somewhere on the edge of service um, and maybe you're covered under a tree and you still need that cell connection. You can still use this antenna. Two uh, cellular leads to the antenna and then plug in two of the regular paddle antennas that'll come with the router. So that can be an option if you're trying to kind of jerry-rig it with something that's already existing. Uh, that could be a really great option to keep the install very minimal. With the install of the B1 complete, uh, we are then going to basically power it up, plug it in, and get Starlink working as well. I like doing this specifically at this point to make sure I'm only working on one piece of equipment at a time. So I wanna make sure the B1 is plugged in, I'm getting the right Wi-Fi, uh, we've got Starlink connected correctly, uh, and all of that's kind of merged in. So we'll plug it in, we get power, we're gonna wait for it to come online, and then we're gonna do our configurations for John. So I will set up the Wi-Fi networks as he likes it. Now, if you're connecting Starlink directly to your PepLink, make sure you go download the Starlink module, basically inside the, the PepLink dashboard, and that allows you to see and control the Starlink directly from the PepLink device, and also optimizes the traffic from Starlink into your router. So it's really important to do that as it kind of optimizes your speed and connection. If you have any questions about configuring your, your PepLink in general and our general tips and tricks, we have a full guide on this too. I won't go over it here as the guide is always updated with our best practices, but definitely make sure to check that out if you have any questions about your PepLink configuration and what we suggest when we set up PepLinks for customers. Now, once the B1 5G is all completely configured, that's when I'm going to move to the access point. Now, I had pre-configured the access point before coming to this install, um, and we have a full video guide on exactly how to connect these access points to your particular PepLink device. Uh, we have it for if you've got an AP controller, like this one does, or if it doesn't, and how you can connect those two. Uh, so I'll link those videos description or above, depending on how you're watching the video, so you can see that link as well. Uh, but with this already configured, really all we had to do was plug in the access point where we wanted it. I could, had configured this particular access point to work off of mesh, as it was gonna be impossible to route more ethernet cables and PoE down. We just didn't wanna make it that complicated. So the B1 5G is plugged in and has power. We're gonna plug in the access point anywhere you want within Wi-Fi range and that is going to broaden the Wi-Fi network. So we specifically put it in this closet that you see, and right behind and like kind of below that closet on the outside is where those additional TVs and other, other devices he was trying to get connected to the internet and was having some just general Wi-Fi problems. He was also having Wi-Fi issues all the way in the back of his rig because it was just going through the kitchen and going through closets of metal hangers and he was just having just general distance problems. Uh, so this will allow that to basically the Wi-Fi will just get a little bit further back. Uh, with the access point kind of pre-configured, all it really was was finding a plug, plugging it in, mounting it where John wanted it, and just kind of letting it sit there for three or four minutes until it came online, found the B1 5G Wi-Fi, and started broadcasting. It was really, really quite a simple upgrade for us. Um, and the improvements were drastic. So when we immediately started just doing testing for everything, we did a speed test, we connected through Starlink, through the WAN port, and we were immediately seeing, you know, huge, huge improvements on the internet speed. Now the access point two worked perfectly. You can go into a lot of different areas um, of the PepLink to check which devices are connected to which access points on it. So we were doing that to make sure the right stuff was connected and we were getting decent speeds through the entire RV. 
Now the last exciting thing about this is John was going to be moving to our M-Series data plans. Uh, this works now on all devices. So we've had M-Series out for a while, it was pretty limited on the devices it used. We've now been able to open that up to all Peplink devices we sell. Uh, if you, it runs on eSIM, if, you're, if you've bought a newer device in the last year or so uh, that has an eSIM capable, that's great. If not, no worries. It also will work on a physical SIM we can send you. But these M-Series plans are, it's M-Series for multi-carrier plans. So one plan, one subscription, you can pay for, depending on how many gigs you want, but it'll still jump between any, all major U.S. carriers. So one plan, and you can get access to T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T, depending on what's available in the area. What he was excited about with the M-Series plan and adding that to his setup is he will now have Wi-Fi no matter if Starlink is set up or not. Uh, they plan to use Starlink as their primary for data as it gives them about a terabyte a month um, of usage. But when it's not set up or you're under a tree or you're in a place where Starlink might be slow because everyone's using Starlink, uh, you can now switch over to this cell connection. It'll pick up whichever carrier is available in that area and keep you connected even if you just didn't get Starlink out that day, you're parked under a tree, you're in motion, whichever, <laughs> whichever uh, why Starlink isn't going to work for you that particular time, the cell will just be there as a backup. Um, and this can be something you have just automatically roll over or something you can manually configure when it's turned on and turned off. Uh, for M-Series, there's lots of different plan options. If you want a lower gig, more emergency plan, like 100 gigabytes a year, all the way up to 100 gigabytes a month, you could do that. Uh, we also have much bigger plans if you needed something that's more like an unlimited or 500 gig plan. Depending on what you're looking for, we have different options in this M-Series lineup. Uh, so you can check all that out on our website at mobilemusthave.com slash mseries. What made me most excited about this video is at the end of the day, I had a very happy customer and John was very excited about his internet speeds and how reliable things were. And just overall, it was working better for him. That is always our goal here at Mobile Must Have. So if you are having an issue or you have any questions or trying to figure out how to get a setup similar to this for your own setup, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can chat with us on our website, shoot us an email, whatever your best form of communication is that works for you. You can start with email and then we can call you if you want to, however that works. We are here to help you guys kind of design the best internet setup for you and what might work well based on your needs, based on your rig, based on your setup, based on how often you travel. Please let us know we are here to help. Feel free to also leave a comment in the description below if you've got any questions and we hope to see you guys all on the road. Thanks. Bye.